It's day one of the 21 day challenge. Oh, and I hope you brought your A game because there's a lot of cool stuff happening in this episode. So there are three big ideas in episode one. The first is Node and NPM and how the JavaScript ecosystem makes use of those tools and how we're going to make use of those tools to number two, install Angular CLI, which is our bootstrapping and component creating super goodness that we're going to be applying throughout the whole course. And the third big idea is we're going to have a look at some IDEs and text editors and stuff that are popular in the Angular community and look at how we can use our existing IntelliJ and stuff like that to build awesome source Angular 2 apps. It's going to be fun. Let's do it. Let's hustle. Hey everyone, welcome to the coding section of today's workshop. So let's just dive right in. First of all, to get underway today, you're going to have to download Node.js. So go to nodejs.org and you can download the very latest. So I would get the 6.4 six, stream or whatever the latest stream is by the time you're watching this video. Uh, the Angular tooling all works in 4 plus, but hey, come on, we're cutting edge people. So let's just do this. Now, once you install Node, you might be wondering, well, what is Node? Uh, Node is basically a JavaScript runtime that can run outside of the browser. Okay, so typically uh, when you're hacking up browser stuff, you're running in the browser context with a DOM, but when you're running in Node land, you are running outside the browser. So um, Node comes with a thing called the Node Package Manager. So think of this as like a Maven like tool where you can download dependencies from the web and install them in your project. So what we're going to do is we are going to just make a little node project just to get you familiar with the tooling. So let's just make node me. I'm not going to node me. I'm going to go npm init, which is just going to set up a very simple little uh, project descriptor. So I'm going to just default my way through all of these. And once I've done that, you'll see that in this directory, there's now a package.json. If we want to have a look at that, let's just have a look at what that actually contains. It's really just a bunch of metadata around this project. So we don't have any dependencies yet, but this is our description of our project where our dependencies will eventually go. So we're going to now add some dependencies. And again, Node Package Manager is our friend. So we're going to go Node, Node Package Manager install uh, minus minus save Lodash. So Lodash is a utility library popular in JavaScript land that does, you know, common things around arrays and strings and all sorts of good stuff. So let's install him and you'll see once that's installed it's now declared as a dependency here and we have our node modules directory which contains the actual downloaded code from the web so that's declared as a dependency here on our runtime now if we hadn't said save but had instead done save dev what we end up with is actually a dependency that's for compile time rather than runtime. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense for Lodash. It's kind of a runtime dependency, but imagine we'd install a build tool here or, or something like that, and you get a bit of an idea. So there's the third place, rather than just the stuff we can use for runtime, which is minus minus save, or the stuff we can use for uh, compile time, minus minus save dev, there's one other place we can do, and that's uh, we can install it globally. So we can install minus G, uh, and in our case, we're going to install the Angular CLI. Now, this tool is something that we want to use all over the place. In fact, we want to use it outside of any node directories entirely when we want to scaffold out a new Angular project. So the minus G puts this in the global path. So you are now able to use the ng command from anywhere you happen to shell out to. So this takes a while to download. So we'll come back in a sec and go from there. Okay, our Angular CLI is now installed. So I'm going to get out of my node me directory and close out of my VS code. And I'm going to create a brand new Angular project. Now, if you're not sure what to do, you can use ng, which is the new Angular CLI sort of command line starter and type in help and it will give you a list of all the available ng commands. There's tons of them. You can do testing and compiling and adding scaffolding artifacts for controllers and all kinds of good stuff. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to create a new project and we do an ng new. And our project's going to be called TwitNG because we're going to write a little Twitter clone because everyone knows the mental model of how that works. So this is going to create a TwitNG directory and create a full scaffold of an Angular application that's ready to run and then install all those NPM packages that it needs to run for both compile time and runtime. So I'm going to let that run and we'll come back in a sec. Well, our app has finished sparking up now. And if I go into my directory, I now have this nice little collection of files ready to go. In fact, if I fired it up in Visual Studio Code, we can actually have a look. And we've got here our package.json file, which has our 
dev time dependencies down here, which we are using when we actually build the product. And that's got, for instance, Karma as a, a testing tool and Jasmine for um, uh, TDD, etc. So all of these kinds of tools are here at dev time dependencies. And then we have our runtime dependencies, which are like the core Angular components, uh, including the router and forms and all those kinds of good, good stuff that we'll want to use. So why wait another moment further? Let's just actually spark this up. So if we type in ng serve, that will actually start up the Angular runtime environment in a little lightweight server that we can actually use for our dev testing. Uh, and that's at localhost 4200. So if I spark a browser up and I go to localhost 4200 and I spark that up, we'll see that our app twit ng fires and we're ready to go. Okay, that's about it for today. There's one last thing I want to talk about, which was IDE tooling. So I'm gonna exit out of here and return to Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code is a super popular tool for Angular development. Uh, it's an open source tool from Microsoft. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, and it has some great kind of debugging tools, a lot of integrated um, autocomplete. Uh, it's kind of bridges the gap between a text editor and a more traditional IDE, but still super duper fast to edit in. Uh, the next thing that you might think about having a look at too is WebStorms. WebStorm is a more complete uh, IDE tool from IntelliJ, or you may actually just use full-blown IntelliJ, which is just a superset of what's in WebStorm. WebStorm has the advantage of being quite a cheap product to license. It's sort of around $20, $25, and gives you that full IDE experience if you're looking for something a little heavier, but that gives you the full completion experience. So that's about it for today. Tomorrow, we're gonna to start digging into the internals of our actual, actual ang Angular project, and we're gonna start writing our first lot of code. But today, we just wanna review what we talked about. We talked about, first of all, Node, that we can download and install Node, and we have a Node command to run JavaScript outside the browser, uh, including a runtime environment for standard library type things. We talked about NPM, which we use for package management, for downloading artifacts that we can then bundle with our project, either at runtime or compile time. And we looked at package.json as the kind of equivalent of a Maven POM, uh, which describes a bunch of dependencies. Finally, we installed the Angular CLI and Global Scope, which gave us an ng command that we can run everywhere. And then we used it to do a ng new, which creates a new project. And we sparked and scaffold out our very first twit ng project. Thanks so much for hanging out today, team. Tomorrow, don't miss it. We're going to be back and be doing some actual coding at our very first Angular 2 app. So be there for that one.